Okay, this is my first video of fall 2020 for my introduction to networks class. We're going to just review the concepts in chapter one. So this is my first video based on a review of chapter one terminology. In chapter one, when we talk about hosts, what do they mean in the curriculum when they're talking about hosts or a host? Well, basically, uh, every computer on the network is a host. So every computer is a host, but that could mean also a server or a printer or an IP phone or anything. Clients and servers. Basically, clients make requests and servers respond to requests. The concept of peer-to-peer -peer networking. In peer-to-peer -peer networking, every device or every host computer has to be its own server and its own client. So in a peer-to-peer -peer networking, you basically don't have a dedicated server, just every computer on their own. And if they want to share something, then maybe they turn on some type of server service like file sharing or something like that. Client server networking usually involves having centralized management, centralized authentication and security, like with a domain controller. So if you have a Windows server, you would have maybe an authentication server, domain controller, and you'd ha have the benefits of having that type of centralized management and centralized security. End devices. End devices are where messages typically start and where they end. So they initiate communication. An end device initiates communication and terminates communication. So it's the, the beginning and the end of the communication. It's usually a computer, an IP phone, a server, or something like that. Also, end devices are easy to define as opposed to intermediary devices, which propagate messages. So an intermediary device would be like a switch, a router, a hub, a wireless access point, something like that, that helps the message travel along. In the curriculum, when they talk about the term media, network media, or just the term media, what they mean is they mean the cables, like unshielded twisted pair copper cables or fiber optic cables, but it could also, the media could also be electromagnetic waves, as in wireless networking. In chapter one, we talk about the difference between the physical topology and a logical topology. When you think of these topologies, we're basically talking about maps. So a physical map of the network versus a logical map of the network. So a physical map is going to show how devices are physically connected or wired and where they are physically located. So what building, what rack, um, what device connects to what device physically, meaning cabled. And then the logical topology shows how devices are addressed. Basically, the logical topology oftentimes will show the IP addressing, which is up to the administrator. So it's a logical topology in that the administrator could logically change it to a different addressing scheme. So this is how devices are addressed, how they talk to each other based on their address, which is up to the administrator to define. A LAN is a local area network. This is your organization's ethernet network. A WAN or wide area network connects from the router out to your internet service provider. So basically, the LAN is the inside network, the WAN is outside of your network, which connects out to the internet to your internet service provider. Some other terminology related to this is the internet, extranet, and intranet. So the internet is the WAN, it's outside of the LAN network. The extranet is the LAN partially. The extranet is a portion of the LAN that's made available to users from outside on the WAN. So if you wanna make some of your internal network available to outside users so that they can, let's say, VPN in and have access to a part of your network, well, we could call that the extranet. The intranet is LAN only. So if it's on the intranet, it means it's only inside your network. It's only on the LAN. If it's on the internet, it's outside of your network. Okay, another term that they talk about in the curriculum is the converged network. Converge network means that uh, converge network carries all services, which used to be from separate providers, meaning data, your, let's say your internet connection to your internet service provider, video, which before would be from, let's say a cable provider, and audio, let's say your, uh, your phones, right? Your IP telephony 
can all be maintained over the same network. In other words, your network on your, uh, in your LAN can carry data, video, and audio, whereas in the past, these used to be separate services from separate providers. So converge network or converge services means that your network is carrying data, video, and audio. IP telephony. Okay, other concepts that are covered in the chapter one are fault tolerance. Fault tolerance means that you have redundancy, means that your network can survive a device failure. If your router goes down, your network is fault tolerant, it could, it could survive it, maybe because you have a redundant or backup router, or you have a backup switch, or you have redundancy, you have backup paths, multiple devices. Scalability is referring to growth. Can your network expand? If you get 100 new users this year, will your company be able to easily expand the network? Can it scale? Quality of service re refers to prioritization. Does your network prioritize the data? Can it differentiate traffic and handle audio and video through prioritization? Is it using QoS? So quality of service. This is a protocol that's used typically on most networks to help prioritize things like um, audio, like IP telephony, right? Um, uh, your phone conversations all over the network. Uh, prioritize video. Prioritize certain types of traffic over other, and that's done through QoS. Security is about protecting your network. So it, protecting two things, your network devices, like your routers and switches and servers and things like that, but also the data, the information that they carry. So it's it's put into two components in the curriculum. Okay, also related to security is the concept of CIA, or confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality refers to typically encryption algorithms. Confidentiality means encrypting your data so that it's unreadable. Integrity oftentimes means hashing algorithms, hashing your data so that you can come up with a checksum which gives us a, um, it gives us a, it gives us a checksum of the data so that we can know if the data has been changed. So this helps us to make the data so it's unchangeable because we know if it's changed because we have this checksum or hash of the data. Now hashing algorithms and, and integrity can also mean the ability to authenticate your users and hashing can take care of um, it can help us with checksums, but it can also help us authenticate our users. And availability, which refers to resiliency in the network, no downtime. So do you, do you have availability? So these are three things, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Can you encrypt your data? Can you um, hash your data so you make your data that it's unreadable? It's unchangeable. And also, do you have no downtime in your network? Do you have your data available all the time? Resilient network. Then another thing that's talked about in chapter one is the idea of the cloud. What is the cloud? Cloud is basically servers and data in a data center, basically that's connected to the internet. So your data is somewhere else. It's on a computer in a data center, typically a server, and the data is in that data center. Now there's different types of clouds. Basically, you have a public cloud, which means anyone can access that public cloud for a fee or for by joining a service, or a private cloud, which is for employees of an organization or company only. And then you have things like hybrid clouds and things like that that are partially public, partially private, things like that. And then security threats. Security threats are mentioned in chapter one and security threats can be external from outside your network, um, like denial of service attacks or, um, or malware attacks, attacks, phishing attacks coming from outside of your network, um, spam, things like that. But security threats can also be internal from inside the network. They can be users that are already inside your network that are launching attacks from within the LAN. So this is starting from the WAN, and this is initiated from the LAN from within. And that's the basics that are covered, the opening concepts in chapter one in the uh, Cisco Academy CCNA1 Introduction to Networks.